My name is Big C, Chris. I'm from the Dubs, East Oakland. Born and raised, you know. You have to understand that the recidivism rate is 70%. This is the block right here, 25th of Foothill, man. They hit us all over the place, you know what I mean? They hit the corner on me right here, ran up on me. Police hit these corners, they leaning, you know what I'm saying? And they come, they smashing right up here, jumping out the car, and you got to hit them back fences back there. That mean if you stand 10 brothers in a row, seven of them are going back to prison within the first 90 days. This is where I went to prison many times at, not just once, but three, four times. If you do over 10 years in prison, you are compared to a vet, an army veteran that just came out of war, coming back, and now you get out. That's when the real fight starts, because that's where the party starts, because you got to figure out how are you going to live. It's sink or swim. Then they turned it turned into the murder dubs. That's what they call it now. Um, you know, I came up as a kid, man. We was um from from the beginning, we was pumping pumping gas and, and um, you know, we was um helping people with their groceries and you know, we was riding around getting plums off trees and low walk courts. low courts and High goes with the pretty young ladies, the pretty girls back in the day when they used to, you know, the pressing comb and all that stuff, <laughs> old school dresses, you know. Um, I come up in the beautiful era. I think it was the 70s, you know, and um, it was a lot of family, family orientation, um, a lot of um, love, a lot of black pride. You know, the Panthers had just left the scene. So Oakland was beautiful. We skate around the lake on the weekend. You know, I come from that, man. Um, eventually, you know, when I got older, when I got a little bit older as, a, you know, pre-teens, I used to like hanging out with um, the AC Mile. <laughs> Go hang out on 4851, my cousin Demon Den. Um, you know, we go to the mall. Every, you know, everybody go to the mall. Your mom gives you some um, money to go buy you some G 501 surfers. Uh, World Cup surfers, uh, 501s, derby jacket, you know, hanging with the fellas, you know. Absolutely, and that was the dress code, the derby jacket, and later on in the game, next thing you know, start putting the names on the jacket. Right. Put your hood on where the you jacket, from? where you were from. Yeah, I, I can, man, I feel that. Oh, hats yeah. too, man. Yeah, the hats with the little hands on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was a little later. Back then, um, you know, it was... You see niggas with the sniper hats, with the uh, glasses, with no lenses, um, Playboy bunnies, you know, um, uh, Playboy bunnies with the perms and the snipers, you know what I'm saying? So it was, it was, it was fun, man. I, you know, I'm for, I grew up on the 23rd, so I used to look at, um, look at um, Mickey Moe and all them, and and you know, them was OGs, and we was just. We was kids back then. We we had to. We couldn't even walk past there. My mom would whoop our ass if we even walked past the Tony's Liquor. So. By 16, I was on 96. I was um, I was grinding. I was um, grinding. Be and it started way before then. You know, um, around 81, 82, you start hearing about the Powder Boys, Dope Boys, and and you see your your, your homie. He got a, a wad of money like this. I'm like, what the, how, how you get all that money? Because actually, we was poor. You know what I'm saying? We come in eating government cheese. Mama couldn't pay the rent. Granddaddy and grandfather in there arguing and shit. <laughs> On the first, she then went to the track and messed off the money. <laughs> so, you know, it, we, was, we, was, we was going through it, man. You know, it was a struggle, you know? Um, and you know, you can look at the, the the situation that black folks has been going through all throughout the history in America um, that, that that made that happen. But you know, wasn't nobody balling in the '70s. You know what I'm saying? In the '80s. You know, if you was, you had a good job. You was working at General Motors, or you was working at one of these companies. You, um, you went to school, had a college education, um, but in Oakland, a lot of families were struggling, you know. So um, when we when I seen 
when we seen that, you know what I'm saying, and, and um, they got on the flyest um, clothes and stuff like that. Oh man, you know, we it, it was a move. It, it just dropped out of nowhere the dope game, and um, you know we had to get into that because, you know, a lot of us, me and my family, we hung together. You know, we was tight. You know what I'm saying, and a lot of us, um, we had like a we was already a crew, you know, so we got together and said we're gonna get do that, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do, mm -hmm. and then look, listening, um, looking at up to Felix Mitchell and uh, Mickey Mo and um, Little Girl, and then <laughs> we coming, we we trying to get, we trying to be ballers like them, millionaires like them, man. They said what? Felix bought um, the Clark Gable mansion. Oh man, that's that's that was who we was looking up to. We wanted to be like Fee. Okay, yeah, man. So this is the 25th Apartments, man, where we um, set up shop back in the day, long time ago in the 80s. And um, this fence used to be wo a wooden fence. So when we was grinding, the, the 5-0 couldn't see through the fence. So they, one time they set up a van right here. They just parked the van right here. It was full of police, similar to a white bitch across the street. But they parked the van, you couldn't see in the van, and whoever opened the door, that's when they would try to hit. But this was wooden. We used to hang out right here, or we'd be on the second floor looking over. You know what I'm saying? On this, or we'd be on this side looking over, making sure we're walking down the streets. And, um, if they hit, we hit the back fences in the back roof back there and go to the other apartments around the corner. Or we had spots up in here where we would go. But if they hit, we wanted to get out of these apartments and hit the um, escape route in the back. So on this whole street, you know, this being 25th, this was the whole block, man. So this was one of the spots that um, I was at. You know, I had a spot right here, that house across the street right there. Upstairs, we had that one. This right here was, um, they, they became the police. They used to watch us, and the Mexican uh, mother, she didn't like us, and the kids became police officers. <laughs> what was it like when you first started, I guess, getting on Grinding? the side of the law? Yeah. Honestly? <laughs> Man, niggas was getting high, man. <laughs> Two Stroll was rapping about bass rock cabbies and niggas was smoking Grammys. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we was grinding at the same time, right? But a lot of, that's how a lot of guys in my generation got caught up and became dope addicts. You know what I'm saying? Cause they, Cause they couldn't get out of that, they couldn't get out of that, um, that, that drug use. You know, but some people went through it and went through the stages. And you know, we had rock houses. Used to used to be places where you 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 would work for uh, somebody who had a house, mm -hmm. and um, he'd pay you to watch out or um, work inside the rock house, and you get paid just like a job. Or on the street, you get um, a certain amount of money for grinding for somebody. And um, eventually, as a as a youngster, we took that education. And we just we stayed in that life, and eventually we became the the big big guys, you know. This is another spot right here where my my grandma used to stay. And man, this was like '86. It was popping, incredibly popping. It was rolling. I'm talking about really rolling. And um, that's when we first got in the game. And that's where we really basically got our feet wet in this house right here. What used to happen is nothing but cop and blow. And they come in, they, every car came down here was buying some dough. And they used to pop 24 seven. I used to fill up my pockets, my front pockets, my back pockets, my jacket pockets, a bag. And we used to um, have a, we used to grind with a stick a pistol and a flashlight. So when you hit the corner, you flash the light. That's where you know where to pull. We didn't want you to pull in front of us because no. we had customers that already knew. Pull over and park. When you hit this corner, pull over and park. I park around the corner and walk down. You know, so um, 
They see that light, they see that we, who we operating, they pull over and park, and they come get served. Can't have no ones, can't have no chains. Wow. You know, $20 only. We were selling 20s, you know what I'm saying? Later on, it became, they started selling 10s. But it was $20 on You didn't have $20, you'd get your ass beat, you know? So, um, watching that corner, watching that corner, police hit. Shoot, that's the exit right there. Buses pull up. You used to have girls on the bus and shit, you know? They, sometimes they get off, you know what I'm saying? They, everybody was always, because it was wild. It was, it was popping over here, man, you know? It was popping, and, and, and every day we was going to the mall and get fresh. We go to the mall, go get a new fit, and we go get fresh. You know, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting out here, got the brand new Nikes on, a nice sweatsuit or something, a nice fit, and we fitted out here. And the police, they they knew what was going on, especially they knew the look of the, of the D boys. So they was gonna try to jack us, but we was ready because the bundle is over there. Or down there, you know what I'm saying? I had a spot right here. Spot there. You know, had a little, little female stayed there. Okay. And she roll out here, you know, had somebody washing these corners. We had somebody washing the corners both ways. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it just was wild back then, man. It was nothing but grinding. These apartments, we had these apartments right here. It was nothing but strictly grinding going on here. You know, people that lived here, they knew what time it was. It was like, you know, they was under siege because we'd have, um, I'm not gonna say everybody's names, but it was more people than me. And we, we, we had to block, man. It was a million dollar spot over here. So every day it was just nonstop traffic coming through this, this corner. And coming from that way, you have people coming from Alameda, getting off the bar station. Um, but only, not only that, it was different spots mm -hmm. all around. You know what I'm saying? You had spots up here, spots over there. You know, I'm not going to say too many people names. Yeah, no, no. You know, yeah. but um, yeah, we would grind, we'd grind all, we'd grind all day. And, um, you know, motherfuckers, for, for a brief period, for about two, three years, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was. You grind, grind all day, and then at night you meet up with your partners. Where I was at, you know, I, I, I first started grinding on 96. You know what I'm saying? 96 was very violent back there. It was a lot of niggas over there, and it was um, a lot of the players in the game came through 96 because 96 was rolling, you know? Um, Lipston was down there, Kim Servine, uh, Brim and Fat Ran and Ice T and all of them, uh, Birch, uh, Ota B and uh, Art and them. So um, it was a lot of, lot of, lot of stuff out there, man. And um, you know, as we got into the game, because you know we were, it was like a world when it hit us. We didn't know what the hell we was doing. You know, since once we straightened up and seen what the capabilities of, then we start getting money. You know what I'm saying? Then nigga couldn't, if a nigga was um, blowing or doing any of that shit, he couldn't fuck with the real players. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, we, um, we nigga, nigga start getting money and um, me and my folks, we was going all over the place. Um, Frisco, um, Richmond, you know what I'm saying? We had a, we took over a spot in Richmond, um, me and my brother and my partner, Ice T, we went over there to San Francisco to fuck with them boys out there. And we had a spot on 96, then my grandma moved to 25th. We created that we created a whole spot on on 25th. That's where I'm from right now, you know what I'm saying? And 25th was like a million dollar spot. You know what I'm saying? That was like a spot. It was under. We had a lot of different races they used to come through there. But they used to, you know, when we first started grinding, BGF told us that we couldn't grind. It was just, you know, cause it was some guys that was drug addicts that um, tried to intimidate us. Cause we 15, 16, 17 years old, you know? And then I got, I had a whole household of family members, youngsters, you know, and we grinding. And they tell us um, we gotta pay them. But they just crackheads, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we start mopping 
everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we used to have the ambulance over there every day. And I heard a guy, because uh, I went to Santa Rita. I, I went to jail one time, and an uh, OG, he told me, he was, he was talk, in a bullpen talking about, um, he was talking about the feed them and he, how they set up shop. He said, the first 30 days, first two months, we whooped ass, and then the turf was, you know, made that it was cool so we took that mentality and not only did we do that we bought a lot of guns because you could buy anything they, they would sell it they'd say a kitchen sink a whole kitchen a whole house you know what i'm saying so we bought all the guns and we 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 was in a mob mentality and we embraced that and we took that that life and we lived that life to, to the fullest, you know what I'm saying? Even if we would expire or die, we was living that life. We had a saying, Super Bowl Sunday on the 50-yard line, it's gonna happen, you know, it's gonna go down.